YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, bit of a break from the Flysky vids. I've been asked by a friend at the channel if I'll build this one up for him. So it's a Rev D RDX drift car. And we're just going to build it up. I'm not going to put the body on it because he's already got that. So we're just going to build it up, fit the motor and everything, and uh, see how the build goes. So, I'll bring you in for a close-up look and uh, we'll crack on with it. So straight off, it's quite a small box, not an awful lot on here, does give you a few of the uh, pictures of what you get, not an awful lot else, but we do get the instructions, which are quite nice, they do have scale drawings of the actual parts in each bag, so it shouldn't be too bad to follow, we get a nice set of, set of stickers, We've got a bag with uh, what look like brake discs and a few suspension parts. We do get bearings, which is nice to see. Lots of little E-clips. Mainly plastic parts. We do get a bag of shims, more bearings. We get the shock oil, so it's 50 CST shock oil. There are bladders included with shocks. They are plastic bodied, but nice. It's oil, got oil shocks. A few more mounts. All black hex screws by the looks of it. We've got more bearings. Looks like a servo arm body mounts and body clips got a metal idler gear or the slipper drive should I say and more bearings we do get a little tool kit and some foam padding and two allen keys and a little antenna straw looks like we get some double sided tape the spur gear so it's 48 pitch, another body clip, not sure if they're spare parts. And then we get a plastic chassis. It is only a £249 kit this, so it's not, uh, not extremely expensive. And it looks like we get a parts list. So, let's uh, start getting this built. Right, so starting off on uh, page one, part one. I'm going to need a tiny little drop of bearing oil on us bearings. So it's telling us we want a bearing in the top and bottom of this part. Then it says we may need one of the tiny little shims. And that goes on this little weird part. Then we have that facing away and the shim sits in it and then we put that through the top and it should screw in. And for this you're going to need a 2mm hex, it does tell you do not over tighten this part. So you don't want to be tightening this down to the point where you're trying to crush your bearings. And it does say the 0.1mm shim may not be required. But you just want it to run nice and freely. It does seem pretty good. If we hold it tight, there's no slop in that whatsoever. So, that's this first part. Let's see what else we've got. Right, so moving on, we're going to get one of his little ball joints and we need to fit that into part of the steering assembly. So, let's quickly get this screwed in. And just remember when you're doing this, don't over tighten them because you've got quite fine threads. Just going into plastic and you will shear things off so again just going to put a tiny drop of bearing oil on his bearings and again for these it's the bigger of your remaining bearings 
So once we've got that in, uh, anybody that hates building turnbuckles will absolutely love this. They're already made up and they're, they're non-adjustable, but ultimately you set them and that's what you set the length to. But 43.0 mil, and it's actually writ on it, 43.0 millimeter. So we connect that all together and it says to have the sort of length writ on the outside. So we've got that. Let's move on and see what we've got next. Right, so still moving on with the first page. It's 10 as we need to mount this onto here. And you use one of the 10 mil screws for this with two mil hex head. So we should just be able to screw this in. And so far, really impressed with these instructions. They have a full list of parts and their actual sizes, which is really nice to see. So once we've got that on, we can then put that part of the steering on. You get a little lock nut that you need to drop into place. And this is captivated. It's also a nylock nut. So it won't come loose. And again, don't over tighten it. There should be no slop, but no restriction on your movement. And then finally, we're going to slide the bearings down on that. And we should have some steering assembly made. So let's see what else we've got. Right, so moving on, we then need to get this part. And we're going to need another of these tiny little shims. So we drop the little shim on. Again, it does tell you it may not be needed. So I guess we just try it. And then we've got a 12 millimeter screw down either side. I'll just get one started and then screw the other one in. And I must admit, so far, this is, um, if it carries on like this, this is going to be quite an enjoyable build. And I'm already thinking that I could quite easily recommend this for somebody building the first RC. Um, I know a lot of people mention Tamiya kits or Tamiya, depending on how, how you want to pronounce it. But in all honesty, the fact that this uses actual hex hardware, yeah, that all feels perfect. And there's not very much slop in any of this at all. That's quite impressive. So I did use the shim on here and on there. But we've got us uh, beginnings of a steering assembly. So let's carry on, see what else we've got. Right, so moving on. We're going to get as one mil plastic spacers. These are fastened on the tree. Then we want this little plate. And we're going for the innermost holes on both sides. Again on this, just remember not to over tighten them. Because you will either split the little plastic shim. And you could, if you want, swap all these little one mil shims out for um, the anodized ones that they sell on like so eBay and AliExpress. You can get them really, really cheap. Is a very easy way of adding a bit of bling to your RC. So once we've got them in place, you then need your arms. These are the 51.7. And these just pop into place. It does tell you to have the uh, writing on them facing up. And I don't think these are going to pop off in a hurry. They're definitely a, uh, a pretty decent fit. So we've got that in place. Let's carry on and see what else we've got. Right, so carrying on. We've got to get a tiny bit of bearing oil on the four remaining bearings. These are the smallest. So we're going to want two on the underside.
and for a mainly plastic kit this actually feels really nice to build. The bearings are held very tight but not excessively tight they're just the right fit which is really nice to see and I love the way it actually comes with these shims so then you want these weird looking things and then you go down from top and it says we need it facing away and then we're going to fasten it onto our steering so let's see if I can get one started I can certainly say the uh, machining on the heads of the hex components is pretty good as well. There's no play. I mean, yeah, I'm using MIP drivers that are pretty good anyway, but there doesn't seem to be any play, and you have to yank the driver out. Now, again on this, it tells you not to over-tighten it. I am fitting the 0.1mm shims on the top of the bearings but there is no play in that whatsoever and that is really free the only thing that I think may need to free up over time and it will do as you're steering is that arm it will really stiff to put on and it is binding ever so slightly you could use one of the uh, little reamers to ream it out but I personally wouldn't I'd rather a link be tight than uh, really loose. But yeah, that seems to work nice and free. And it's interesting that they've put bearings in these, but obviously it's not something that rotates. So doesn't really need bearings in it, but it's nice to see it included. So let's carry on, see what else we've got. Right, so next we've got the chassis and then we got this little part. It goes in line with the four holes furthest back. You can fit it that way or that way. The stock fitting is to fit it in that orientation. You have the longer gap to the back, the shorter gap to the front. So for this, we've just got four screws and they're just gonna go straight through. So they're just gonna be in them four holes. So we'll get them tightened up and carry on. Right, so we got us four screws in, and just to give you some idea of the way around this goes, you've got the bigger gap towards the rear. I'm not sure if this will show on camera at all, it'll be a bit awkward, but these kind of bevel upwards, and you can flip it over so they kind of angle down, but the stock build is to have them so they just taper upwards. So, now we've got that finished, let's see what else we've got. So we're going to be fitting the steering assembly and this just goes in the two holes towards the edge of the actual chassis. So let's see if we can line them up. And then again, it's just going to be these little tapered head screws. So I'll get that one started. And then we'll get that in. So I'm just going to tighten them down and then we'll carry on. So there we have it, as steering's assembled on the chassis and it's feeling pretty solid. So let's carry on. Right, so carrying on, we've got two little ball studs to put in here. So we've got this part, little ball stud in either end, so I'll get them screwed in. So once we've got that in place, we're then going to have to get these two parts. You want the lugs on the back and these holes on the top. So if we line this up, and then you want two of the shorter screws that hold this together. So it's just one in either side. And out of this bag, you've got the shortest two screws they're going into here, the longest two screws 
are what go on next. So the 12 mil ones go through that bit. And I do like the way that these fit together. They've all got little locating studs. So these two long ones go in the top. So I'll just get these tightened down and see what else we've got. So once we're finished, we should have as ball studs, two 8 mil screws, two 12 mil screws, and that's the way it should be fastened. Then we've got the actual chassis. So this is going to fit onto the chassis itself, and you're aiming for the two screws, one back from the front, and these two scrolls on the front of the actual steering assembly itself. So we're going to need two of the 10 mil dome dead screws in the top. So I'll quickly get them screwed down. And then next, once we've got these two in, we just need to flip it over and put one of the tapered screws in each one of the holes at the bottom. So we've got one in there. And then one in that side. So I'll just get these screwed down and then we'll carry on. So once you're finished, we just put them in. And basically, that's what we should be left with. So, next we'll be moving on to the servo, so I'll get all that out and uh, see what else we need. So, moving on, it does come with two plastic servo arms, so you've got a 23 and 25 tooth servo arm and you do get a screw. You're better off using a metal servo arm and the guy I'm building it for has asked me if I'll use this one, so it's just a hoodie 25 tooth servo arm, but it does say that it's 21 mil, and it looks to be the right height, so we should be good with that. The only thing I'm concerned about is the offset. So, because of how the steering lines up, you're going to have to screw this into the back of the servo arm. And I'm not entirely sure because this servo arm, as you see, these are quite a big offset. I'm not sure if it'll have enough travel without hitting the actual servo on way back. But we shall see. So you just need to nip that up. Then we're going to place the blocks just behind the servo. And we've got two screws and two washers. And it does tell you to go for the top holes on these, which should be the only one that they line up with. You do, for the servo standoffs, they have got a little line down the back. I'll see if I can uh, get that on camera in a second. So you do have a little line down the back of them. And it does say that faces away or more like it doesn't show it faces the back at servo so i take it that that is meant to be facing away and the servo that we're fitting in this one is the srt d1 so that's got a servo mounts assembled so let's see what else we've got so next we're going to need two of the tapered head screws and we're just going to position the servo down onto the chassis. We're going to clip the steering arm on and then just flip this over. And we're looking to get them lined up just under the chassis. And it's quite a nice design, although these are all cat sunk head holes. The front one is fixed. And the one towards the rear is slightly elongated to let you get the uh, screw in place. And it does help with slightly different design servos. They're all kind of within a spec, but there is variance. So I do like it with the uh, chassis when they do a slightly elongated hole on one of the servo mounts. It does make your life a whole lot easier. And it does mean you don't have to leave the servo mounts loose before you get these in. That's the other option you've got. You can actually leave 
these mounts loose and then nip them up once you've got it in position. But it does look like at full extent. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to get full lock before it actually bottoms out and it's the servo itself. So looks like you will get away with it if you use a metal arm. And it does look like it's keeping that steering arm pretty straight. Which should be good for drifting. Right, let's move on to the next part. Right, so moving on to what looks like the suspension. First thing is to get these little ball studs screwed in. And to build the suspension up, you have the number facing upwards on each one. So it's quite easy to get them the right way around. If you can't see the number, then you got them wrong way around. And the wider part obviously faces outwards. That's the part that's going to carry your wheel hub. And then when we're screwing these ball studs in, they go on the second one in, is the stock setting. Uh, you're going to build these same for left and right. And I must admit, the more I am building this, the more I kind of get what the approach has been with this. Although, you're not getting an alloy or carbon chassis or anything like that on it. It does seem like the components are incredibly high quality. I mean, if you look at the fit on that, there's virtually no movement in it at all. And then we've got a little shim, a big shim, and then the little end. And again with these, they just seem to fit really nice. They're just tight enough to not have any slop. But that's one built. And then if we flick to the other arm, you want a small shim, a big shim, and then your little end cap. And then a big shim, or sorry, a small shim, and then the end cap. Right, let's see what else we've got. So moving along, we have, if you've got the numbers on the arms facing that side with the bigger shims on the back, you want the 620 mil on the rear with the numbers facing outwards, the numbers facing outwards on the 612 mil, and then these want to have the uh, protrusions facing upwards. So looks like we're going to have to fit these and we've got 12 mil hex heads um, cat sunk screws so you're going to want to get some of these screwed in first else it's going to be a bit fiddly so if we get one in place then we get the second one And just try and line them up best you can. So once we got them in place, we should be able to position our suspension arms. Then we can slide the front one on. And they do just snap in. Then if we stand it up. We should be able to get our little X screws and I believe this is the rear suspension arms. It looks like it is. And again as with rest of it, these are quite fine thread screws going into plastic so you really don't need to go crazy with these. But you should end up with some uh, suspension set up like this. 620 on rear, 612 on front, and these bits facing upwards. Let's see what else we've got. Well, this is the first bit that's confused me. So it looks like we're going to have to flip these over. Because I'm pretty sure it shouldn't fasten on like that, and that shouldn't fasten on that way around. 
So yeah, a little bit confusing on that bit of the instructions because it shows these, they look like they're raised on instructions, but they must be all the way around. So I'll get them swapped. Right, so that's looking better. So you want the 612 on front, 620 on rear, have these facing down, so they slope down from the top. Then we've got to position this onto the chassis. So you're looking at these six holes. So they're going to go like that. So if we quickly flip this over, and we've got six screws that are all the same size. Let's see if I can get one started. So they should all screw in. So you want all six of them screwed down. So we'll get them screwed down and carry on. Right, so that's now screwed on. So we have the rear arms. Very slight play in them, but not crazy. But they are loose, they're not binding. So let's carry on, see what else we've got. So just a side note, you do get these one mil shims and they're for fitting underneath these if you want to adjust the ride height. But the standard build just tells you to leave these out, but that is what they're for. So next step is to adjust, uh, assemble our spool. So for this, I'm just going to put the driven gear on. Line as holes up. And then it says we need four of these screws in. So I'm guessing we're just going to use one hole and miss one all the way around. So I'll get these four tightened up and see what else we've got. Now when screwing these down, do them in a cross pattern and just make sure it's all the way down because you don't want your gear running sort of not true. Then we're going to get as bearings. So again, tiny little bit of grease on these or bearing grease, bearing oil, whatever you want to uh, use. And then these bearings should push on. Then we've got as output cups. So these are gonna sit into a spool. Let's see if we can get that lined up. Yep, that's in. Then we've got a 12 mil screw from either side. So I'll just get that started. Drop that one in. So I'll just get them tightened down and then that's a spool assembled. So moving on, we're going to need four bearings, a bit of oil, and we're going to make up two idler gears. So for these, we're just going to be dropping a bearing in each side. So that's that part done. First off, looks like we're going to need a bearing with a little bit of oil on it. So we're going to want that on the actual shaft. Then it looks like we need to fit two of these little bits. And then we've got two countersunk screws that weren't going in from the back of the sort of gear housing. So once we've got them in, then we can drop us idler gears into place. And then we need one more bearing. Put a little bit of oil on it. And that's going to sit on there. Then we should have as opposite side of his gear housing. So it should be able to put all that in place. Everything spins freely. Doesn't tell you to put any grease or oil on any of these. But we should have two 
of the longest screws. So these should be 15 mil. Then two more tapered head screws. So we just need to tighten these down and then we'll see what else we've got. So for this bit, quite easy. We've just got a little cover that sits on top of that. And we've got one screw. And it's just an eight mil screw for this. I'm not really sure what this is for. I'm not sure if this is for greasing it or checking it or... Seems like it holds into place pretty firmly. I'm not sure if we back that screw off. So maybe it's used for greasing or oiling. I'm not sure. Just a little cover. But let's carry on see what else we have. So moving on. We got this little bit and it looks like that fits in between the gear housing and then we should have one 12 mil screw one from each side so we get them screwed in so next once we've screwed that in it's then telling us we should have another screw to put in so looking at it it looks like it's that top one just a tapered one in that hole so I'll get that tightened down and we'll carry on. So might be worth mentioning at the moment, I'm following the install for short battery, not long battery. So that's why I've used that part. Um, there is another part, I believe it's that one, if you're using the long battery. So moving along, it's turn us to fit the spool. Then we've got the cover with a writing faced upwards. So let's see if we can get this to all slide in. That's quite a nice fit. And then we've got four 10 mil screws that hold all this into place. So I'll get them screwed down and see what else we've got. So moving on, the motor I'm gonna fit in the standard position. So if we put that in place, and we've just got three screws that we need to drop on. And we just need to tighten these three up, so I'll get that done. So again, following the short battery horizontal mount. Looks like we're fastening this part in. And it says you're going to need two of these 10 mil countersunk screws. And these are out of bag seven and you need the plate out of bag six. So I'll get these screwed down and carry on. All right, so working as a way along, we're gonna need two dome dead screws and part of the battery case. So we're gonna get one in each of these. And we're going to need the same on the opposite side. And it says we have these with the first hole lining up and the middle hole. So once we've got them in place, then you've got these bits. And these go on the holes in between if you're using a thin battery, which I believe you will be using on these. So let's see if I can get these started. Now they go that way round and it's just to reduce the height from a full size sort of shorty pack to one of the short ones or thinner. And again with this kit, although this is not one of the most expensive kits with most expensive parts, 
The fact that there's so many different configurations for different battery packs is nice. The amount of RCs that I've bought and then none of your batteries fit. But we'll get these two and these two, these two and these two all screwed in and then we'll carry on. So that's basically what you should be looking at. We got as a sort of rear drive assembly all put together and the top of our battery cage. So let's carry on, see what else we've got. So moving along, we've got these battery holder mechanism and the one mil shims. I'm gonna put these in cause I'm not entirely sure on the actual length of the battery that he's gonna be using. So basically you get one of them with tapered side facing outwards. We put in a shim and we got an 18 mil screw and then same again for this side tapered edit screw in and then we're just going to get these into position and basically these spacers are optional and it does say if you don't use the spacers swap them out for the 15 mil screws but I'm going to get all four of them screwed in. So once we've got all them together, we've then got what look like as battery retainers. So we can clip them one on each side. And looks like we've got that part almost done. Just got a drive gear to fit now. So let's see what else we've got. So we've got a little drive pin to fit. We can just carefully put that through. Then as drive gear, does it say what tooth this is? 84 to 48 pitch, I believe. I've just got to make sure it's pinned on the door. It's just done and go flying. Should be able to get it lined up and just slide it on. And just don't go crazy when you tighten this. It is a lock nut, so it doesn't need to be overly tight. And just check it, make sure it's sat on straight. But that's his drive gear in place. So next thing, we're going to have to get this whole assembly lined up. So if you line it up with these two holes on the front and then flip it over, we should be somewhere near at that. And then I believe you've got sort of one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, <coughs> eight, nine, and ten. So basically, we just need to get all ten of these screwed in. So I'll crack on with that and then see what else we've got. So that's all those 10 screws all fastened in. So it's all nicely assembled. Now let's see what else we've got. So we're now fitting the chassis brace. So for these, these are pretty much going to go on all four of them same. So you're going to have one on the front, one on the back, on each side. Uh, these are all going in with the 10mm screws. Mm. 
and I must admit, when I saw it were a plastic chassis, didn't really think that it would feel very stiff. I thought there might be quite a lot of flex in it. But, I mean, over years, Traxxas has done quite a few plastic chassis RCs. Or mainly plastic chassis RCs, should I say. And they all seem pretty chunky. So, all eight of these screws all need tightening down. So I'll get them fastened on and we'll carry on. So, moving on with this part. First thing we're going to need to do is get one of these ball joints in either side of the suspension man. Then we've got a ball joint and a 1mm shim. Offers 1mm shim plastic tree. And they're going to screw into the innermost lowest position on both sides. So let's get them started. So they're the positions they're going to go in. So we just need to get these screwed down and then carry on. So next thing we're going to do is get the little tie rods. These are the 433 mil. So we're going to clip both them on. And that's that part completed. So let's move on, see what else we've got. All right, so moving on. We've got this, which we need to position on the back of his bulkhead. And then we've got four holes. We just need to put the four 10mm screws, dome dead ones. And we've just got to put each one of these in. And then that will be the rear shock tower on and the uh, diff, and diff assembly closed in. So let's get them tightened down and carry on. So there we have it as rear shock tower all in place let's see what else we've got so depending on where you want to put your ESC we've got the rear matting plate that just slides into place so you can mat your ESC on that if you want easy and quick to remove it quite like that although the layout that we're using we're gonna have motor here so might not be too bad getting extra weight over back for ESC Leaves plenty of space for a receiver. But let's see what else we've got. So we're going to need a little bit of bearing oil on those bearings on this one. Then we're going to get one of these and they're going to go on the back of these. So if you've got it faced that way they're going to go on the inside one and I believe on this again we're going to use a one mil little spacer or shim so let's start by getting these into place and with these again don't over tighten them one they're into plastic and two you've got a little plastic shim and they're very very easy to crush I'm not sure why it shows you to assemble them where it does, because it makes it harder for them to show you. But we're basically going for that hole in the centre. So they want to be in that hole. Then it's turn us to flip them round that way and assemble them this way round. So we're going to get one of the bigger bearings and drop that into the back. Then we've got a plastic spacer that drops in and a smaller bearing. Then you've got your drive shaft that sits through the whole thing. And then again on this side, bigger bearing, a little plastic spacer, smaller bearing, and then our drive shaft. And then it's turners, we need to get some uh, black grease. And I'm quite impressed with the fact that these are all built. So we want us anti wear grease putting in both these. And it's horrible, messy stuff. And it gets everywhere, but it is incredibly good at stopping wear. 
on your uh, drive shafts. Right, so I think that's been long enough now for the first part of build. So I think we'll leave it there and we'll carry on. I'll split this up into a couple of videos, else it's just going to be too long and a bit too difficult to watch all in one go. But thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, share to friends and family, and uh, catch you guys again in the next one.